Colonel Bannister Tarleton was sent to capture or kill Marion in November 1780. What a blatantly English name. Can you think of anything more blatantly English sounding? Well, the Nigel Thornberry. <laughs> also, my butt cheeks are sweaty. Welcome back to MK4E, My Kingdom for an Empire, the official challenge of the Minecraft Empire Challenge. This is the double or nothing version of the challenge, where we have two years to build and discover 102 settlements connected by railroad and by rail across 25 different biomes. You'll find a full list of the details and requirements in the description below. Today we'll be exploring another fun fact find, which is now what I'm calling my little history lessons that I referred to in the last video, link up above. Today's topic is Brigadier General Francis Swamp Fox Marion, the American colonial hero whose tactics and approaches were considerably different from his colleagues and adversaries and heavily lending to modern guerrilla warfare. Of which, of whom we have 10, ten facts, 10 fun facts today. Marion lends his name to our latest build, this here Swamp Village, 1.15 Swamp Village specifically, which was also featured in the last video. Simultaneously today we will be building a village library. As I've said at the inception of Phase 2 of this Minecraft Empire Challenge, link above, every settlement requires a library. Also my butt cheeks are sweaty. That last line might sound out of place, it is something my girlfriend said while I was writing the script. I accidentally typed it. Instead of deleting it, I include this disclaimer for comedic effect. Cue the laugh track. Very good. We are all amused. Yes, the library. Every settlement needs a library. This idea came from Jaybird's lovely animations, of which I outlined in the new rules video. Link up above. The size of the library depends on the size of the settlement. The larger the settlement, the larger the library. The library for the way station settlement, 3x3x3 three by three by three blocks. Minimum size for the village library, in which in this case of Marion, is 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight blocks in size and dimension. The town is 16 blocks cubed. City is 32x32x16 32 by 32 by in height. Metropolis is 50x50x32 50 by 50 by in height. And a megalopolis library would be the size 75x75x64 75 by 75 by blocks in height. As you can see, I'm just gathering some wood right now so we have the materials to build our library. I hate these wonky oak, oak trees. I am done planting oaks, if you ask me. I'm just going to stick to spruce and birch, which grow straight and tall and don't have any complicated bits. All right, on with the fun fact find. Francis Marion. All right, Francis Marion was a Brigadier General in the American Revolution, also known as the American War for Independence, also known as the Revolutionary War. Number one is French Connection. Oh, the only problem is when they're really tall like this. Though colonially English by virtue, Francis Marion was mostly a French stock, specifically French Huguenots, that em immigrated to South Carolina in a wave during the late 17th century. I was fortunate enough to visit the French Huguenot Church in Charleston during my travels there last summer, of which you can see in a video from my other channel link posted above. Francis Marion was born on his family's plantation in Barclay County, South Carolina, around 1732. On the age of 15, he was hired on a ship bound for the West Indies, which sank on its first voyage. He and his crew escaped on a lifeboat that survived at sea a week before being rescued. By the way, today's drink is water. 
on the tap. Watch her. It's wet. Number two, the Seven Years' War. Marion began his military career shortly before his 25th birthday, enlisting in the British Colonial Force. He was recruited January 1st, 1757, along with his brother Job Marion, and served during the Seven Years' War, what many in the States refer to as the French and Indian War, under Captain John Postel. Number three, the American Revolution. Marion was involved in the bloody Battle of Charleston when a British expedition under British General Henry Clinton moved into South Carolina in the early spring of 1780 and laid siege to that settlement. The Charleston garrison fell the 12th of May, 1780. But Marion was not captured as he had broken an ankle in an accident and left the city to recuperate. Number four, a smaller approach. After the loss in Charleston and the defeats at the Waxhaw Massacre, Marion organized a small unit, which at first consisted of only between 20 to 70 men, rarely ever growing larger than that. Marion showed himself to be a singularly able leader of the regular militiamen and ruthless in his terrorizing of the loyalists. He would command lightning fast skirmishes, often catching his adversaries by surprise, then quickly retreating to the areas of dense cover. Much time to swap. His forces became Marion. His, his forces became known as Marion's men. Much like Rogers Rangers of the previous Seven Years' War, and modeled similarly in their size of their force and execution of guerrilla tactics with a penchant for moving quickly through swampy terrain. Unlike the Continental troops, Marion's men, as they were known, served without pay, supplied their own horses, arms, and often even their own food. Number five, Creaky Bridge. While Marion had wanted to surprise the Loyalists with an early morning attack, the surprise was spoiled when his lead horses at the head of the column started crossing a bridge, a wooden plank bridge. Alarm shots were heard in the Loyalist camp and Marion's company rushed to engage them. While the surprise was not complete, Loyalists were sufficiently bested and forced to retreat into the swamp. Number six fun fact find about Francis Marion. Blankets! Word of Marion's success spread and he continued to recruit well after the battle. He also learned a lesson. He probably never get across the bridge intending surprise without laying first carpets across it. Blankets across it. Carpets, blankets, you know, as long as it matches the drapes. Got some doors right here. That one there for the back door. And the spruce from the front doors. Oops. I never got that right. Spruce slabs. I'm going to use spruce planks, pardon me, to outline what will be the windows. Got some iron frames right here. Get some stuff up for decoration. In the meantime, really placeholder. Place is gonna. It's a library. It's a world of knowledge. We have a lot of knowledgeable stuff. We don't have any knowledgeable stuff right now, so we're using spruce slabs. Oh, I've got such a hard cinder. And we're going to use spruce slabs for the roof. Number seven, Swamp Fox. Colonel Bannister Tarleton was sent to capture or kill Marion in November 1780. What a blatantly English name. Can you think of anything more blatantly English sounding? Well, the Nigel Thornberry. <laughs> Bannister Tarleton. It was Tarleton who gave Marion his famous nickname when after unsuccessfully pursuing Marion's troops for more than 26 miles through a swamp, he gave up and swore, as for the damned old fox, the devil himself could not catch him. He despaired of finding the old swamp fox, deluded him by traveling along the elusive and confusing meandering swamp path. 
Now, once Marion has shown its ability at guerrilla warfare and as a serious nuisance to the British, Governor John Rutledge commissioned him a Brigadier General of State Troops. Number eight, Kissing Cousins. After the Revolutionary War, Francis Marion, now Brigadier General, retired. He then married his cousin, Mary Esther Bidou. He served several terms in the South Carolina State Senate in 1784 in recognition of his services. He was made commander of Fort Johnson, South Carolina, a position more decorative than practical, the yearly salary of $500. He died on his estate in 1795 at the age of 63 and was buried at Belle Isle Plantation Cemetery in Berkeley County, South Carolina. Number nine, a different sort of cherry tree. Public memory of Francis Marion has been shaped in large part by the first biography about him, The Life of General Francis Marion, written by M. L. Weems, also known as Parsons Weems, based on the memoirs of South Carolina officer Peter Horry. According to the New York Times, Weems was instrumental in elevating Marion to a mythical status, much like he had with General and later President Washington inventing the apocryphal cherry tree anecdote about President Washington. And Marion's life received similar embellishment as Amy Crawford wrote in Smithsonian Magazine in 2007. <laughs> Lastly, number 10, our 10th fun fact find about Brigadier General Francis Marion at his place names. As he was a famous decorated military leader, there are many places and things named after him in the United States. For instance, the Francis Marion National Forest near Charleston, South Carolina is named after Marion, as is the historic Francis Marion Hotel in downtown Charleston. I don't have any black ink. I can't make it cool on me. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. The city of Marion, Ohio is named after Francis, where an annual Swamp Fox Festival and Parade are held each summer. Marion County, South Carolina, and the county seat, the city of Marion, are named for Marion. The city features a statue of General Marion in the town square and has a museum which has many artifacts related to Francis Marion, including the Marion High School mascot, which is, of course, the Swamp Five. Francis Marion University is located nearby in Florence County, South Carolina. There's a famous wooden roller coaster located in Myrtle Beach called, what else, the Swamp Five. All right, I just want to show you these maps right here. I have this map here. It's basically an aerial view of Marion. You can see all the main buildings in the center. And of course, the witches saw it way off to the side. And here's the district we belong to, which is the Gilgamesh District. Right there is Marion. Up top left, which is, you know, call it the Northwest Quadrant, you could say, is Menelaus. Down here, where the desert meets the Badlands, is Agamemnon. And over here on the edge, this here is the uh, Birch Forest, and including the Birch Forest Village of Gilgamesh, which is the district seat. Now, right in the middle of that, I plan on building a way station in the next video, and it'll connect with the four settlements with the cobblestone road. As it is, as I explained in an early video, we have that rule that all settlements in a district must connect with cobblestone road on top of being connected by a rail. So that's just, I just want to show you that. That's so neat that we have these. Um, I'm probably going to move these into the library. And the library is finished, and I'm going to show you. All right, here is the library. Here's one entrance to it. We enter here. Oh, look at that. He's a cartographer again. He was a librarian, he's back to being a cartographer. So be it. That sucks. Now we need a librarian. Oh, I got some decorative frames. Including specimens of flora and fauna. Here's the case here where we're going to put a lot of good stuff, some books. We've got a fireplace here. I plan on putting an iron grate around it, but well, I haven't got to the building yet. Where should I put maps? You know what? We should put it right here on this post here. This is a good spot. Get out of the way. That's a good place for that. We got lots of bookshelves. I plan on having plenty more. A lectern, of course, for our future librarian. A cake for no real reasons that I had a cake and I needed something to do with it. And here we have the back entrance. Out the door, look at it. Oh, it's a pretty nice building. Fits in very well with the rest. And of course, we got the chimney poking out there with the smoke. 
All right, our village is done. That is the rest of today's episode and our fun fact find about Brigadier General Francis Marion, a.k.a. the Swamp Facts, for whom this village is named. I'll see you in a couple days when I build the way station for Gilgamesh District. Thanks again for stopping by. You're watching My Kingdom 4 Empire, the official channel of the Minecraft Empire Challenge. I'm the Fleet Admiral Awesome. Stay spicy.